Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you've all had a great week. If you are new, please consider subscribing if you end up liking this video. So really quick, my setup is slightly different. My tripod broke literally as I was sitting down to film this video. So it's stuck right now in a fixed position, just basically straight out. So I had to find like the highest bar stool I own to film this video. Hopefully I'll get things fixed and the next one will be back to normal. Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about a man named Philip Austin. Philip had a loving wife and two beautiful children. And from the outside, it seemed like the family had a really great life. But behind closed doors, things were becoming very concerning within the family. Philip started acting strangely. He became more aggressive, mostly towards the kids and things just started to go downhill. And in the end, he does the absolute worst, most messed up thing any father or husband could do. Unfortunately, this case does involve both children and animals, so just please keep that in mind before you continue watching this video. And now let's just go ahead and jump right in. But first, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers a large variety of classes for creative and curious people. There are literally thousands of classes to choose from, anything from business to lifestyle and pretty much anything in between. And Skillshare's website makes it very easy to find the right class for you. Since becoming a content creator full-time just like a month ago, I am having a hard time figuring out how to work from home and stay on top of things and not get distracted. So I took a class called Productivity for Creators Systems organization and workflow taught by a doctor and YouTuber named Ali Abdal. The class was really easy to navigate and I love that I can go at my own pace. I also took a really fun class on houseplants called Plants at Home Uplift Your Spirit and Your Space. The teacher's name is Christopher Griffin and they are just so energetic and fun. You can really tell that they have a true passion for plants. Skillshare has so much to offer whether you're looking to expand your knowledge of a current hobby or creative outlet or if you're looking to discover something new. And the first 1,000 people to use the link on the screen will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and now let's jump back into the case. It's July of 2000 in Northampton, England. A group of people living in the Standens Barn area realize that they have not seen their neighbors, the Austins, in about a week. 31-year-old Philip Austin, his wife, 31-year-old Claire Austin, and their two children, 8-year-old Kieran and 7-year-old Jade, would typically be seen coming and going to and from work and school, but their house had been suspiciously silent over the last few days. The neighbors knocked on the door to see if anyone would answer, but nothing. But they did notice that Claire's car was still parked outside in front of the house. The neighbors become increasingly worried, so they decided to mark the curb where Claire's car tire was, just to see if maybe the car would move overnight. But when they went back to check in the morning, there had been no movement. Now, really fearing that something might seriously be wrong, the neighbors decided to call Kieran and Jade's school to see if the children had been showing up or not. But the school tells them that neither child had been in attendance that week. After hearing the concern from the neighbors, the school decided to try to contact Claire and Philip themselves, but there was no answer. So then they called Claire's mom and stepdad, Carol and Harry Quinn, to see if they knew where the children had been. But Carol and Harry have no idea why the children have not shown up at school. And they immediately have a feeling that something is terribly wrong. Carol and Harry, who are both very close with Claire and their grandchildren, had tried to get a hold of them earlier in the week, but Claire hadn't answered and she had never called them back. When Carol had questioned another family member about whether or not they had spoken to Claire recently, they had told her that Claire and Philip were having some problems in their marriage again, and Claire didn't want Carol to know about it. So after she heard that, Carol just assumed that Claire was just taking some time to gather her thoughts and smooth things over with Philip, and that eventually she would give her a call back. So Carol and Harry just decided to give Claire some space. But now they've received this phone call from their grandkids' school, and now they're really getting concerned. So Carol and Harry hop right into their car, and they head straight over to the Austin family home. Once they arrive at the home, they get out of the car and Carol sees one of the neighbors standing outside. So she goes over to talk to the neighbor while Harry uses a spare key to open up the front door and he walked inside. Now Harry's initial feeling when he walked inside the house was actually relief. He saw a mound of mail that had been slipped through the door mail slot and it looked like it had been accumulating for days. 
So Harry's initial thought was that the family must have taken a trip. They had been talking about planning a vacation recently, so this would explain why the kids had not been at school and now there's all this mail there and all the missed phone calls. But as Harry walked deeper into the house, he was hit with an awful smell. He started walking towards the kitchen and lying there on the ground was the body of his stepdaughter, Claire Austin, and there was blood everywhere. And lying right next to Claire was the body of one of the family dogs. Harry is horrified and he's just trying to figure out what he's looking at. Like, how did this happen? Murder is not in his mind. So he sees that Claire has some cuts on her wrist. So he thinks that maybe she's done this to herself. Harry turns around and he runs straight back towards the front door and he's trying to prevent his wife from walking any further inside the house. He does not want her to see Claire in this state. But Carol pushes right past him and she goes straight to the kitchen and she sees the body of her daughter lying there on the kitchen floor. Carol's mind immediately goes to her grandchildren. Where are Kieran and Jade? So Carol and Harry run up the stairs to the children's bedrooms and there they found both of the children's bodies, Kieran in his room and Jade in hers. And they appeared to have both been strangled to death. They call the police, the police come out and immediately start to process the crime scene and to ask some questions. And one of the biggest questions on everyone's mind is, where is Philip? He's nowhere to be found. He's the only missing member of the family and the police immediately start looking for him. Philip Austin was born on February 14th, Valentine's Day in 1969 in Northampton. We don't know a lot about his early life, but we do know that he was an only child and he has been described as a very quiet boy who just kind of was standoffish. He kind of stayed to himself. After Philip graduated from high school, he remained living at home with his parents and he eventually landed a position working as an overnight shift forklift driver for a grocery store warehouse. Then in 1991, while he was out at a bar, Philip met a woman named Claire Golden. Philip had spotted Claire while she was sitting at the bar with her friends. And so he bought her a rose and he walked over and handed it to her and the two started talking. Claire was almost the same age as Philip. They were only about three months apart, but they were complete opposites. Where Philip was quiet and reserved and very introverted, Claire was fun and outgoing and she had a ton of friends. But opposites definitely seemed to attract in this case and the two began dating. Claire's family was sort of surprised surprised when they met Philip because he just seemed so different from Claire. He didn't seem like her type, but you know, if she was happy, they were happy. And only a few months after the two had met that night in the bar, Claire discovered that she was pregnant. Now this pregnancy was a shock to Claire and Philip and their families. Before Claire and Philip really had a chance to get to know each other properly, they were now suddenly thrown into this very heavy relationship. And they were still pretty young. They were only about 23 at this time, but they both seemed excited about becoming parents. And on February 19th, 1992, Claire gave birth to a son that they named Kieran Michael Austin. And Claire's stepfather, Harry, and her mother, Carol, were so excited about becoming grandparents. They absolutely fell in love with Kieran. Right before Kieran was born, Harry had went out and bought a video camera specifically so he could film pretty much everything that Kieran did. They were just the proudest grandparents ever. But the same could not be said for Philip's parents. Philip's mother, Linda, was a very overbearing, demanding person. She would always be voicing her very strong opinion opinions to Claire and Philip about the way they should be raising Kieran. Claire and Philip didn't like this. And eventually they, you know, just had enough and a big argument broke out and Linda stopped talking to Claire and Philip. And once this happened, Philip pretty much just cut his parents completely out of his life. He didn't want anything to do with them anymore. According to Carol and Harry, after this big family fight, Linda destroyed all of the photos that she had of baby Kieran. Now, if this is true, I think this is very telling of the type of person that Linda was. Maybe there were some deep issues involving Linda and Philip from Philip's childhood, but we'll probably never know. And Philip did not just cut his parents out of his life. He actually cut out his entire family. He just stopped talking to everyone, including his grandmother, who hadn't been a part of any of the drama at all. He cut ties with all of his aunts and uncles, just basically all of the members of his family were cut off. Now, despite all of the drama with Philip's family, Philip himself was said to have been a very attentive father. He would feed Kieran, change his diaper, he was always holding him, and he just seemed very hands-on. Claire and Philip soon expanded their family even more when just about four or five months after Kieran's birth, Claire found out she was pregnant again. And on April 22nd, 1993, a beautiful little girl they named Jade Carol Austin was welcomed into the world. And about three months after Jade was born, Philip and Claire decided to get married. It was a really nice, simple ceremony, and Harry was, of course, there filming every 
everything with his video camera and everyone looked really happy. But people couldn't help but notice that the groom side of the church was almost completely empty. Claire's side had all of her family and lots of friends. Philip's side only had about one or two people. And I don't even know if those were actually people from Philip's side. That could have been spillover from Claire's side for all I know. Now, I am not shaming anyone who decides to not have their family at their wedding. There might be some serious issues there that you don't know about. However, it is a little odd that Philip didn't have any friends present. You would think that he would have someone there for him. But as it turns out, Philip just didn't have any friends. Outside of Claire, he really didn't associate with anyone. In fact, his best man at the wedding wasn't even a friend of his. He was actually a friend of Claire's. After the wedding and with their family now complete with the birth of their second and final child, the Austin settled into family life in the Standins Barn area at 76 Stockmead Road. In the beginning, Philip supported the family with his modest living, working as a night shift forklift operator, and Claire looked after the kids, and life seemed really good from the outside. But as time went on, Carol and Harry started to see some things that didn't sit well with them. When Philip would play with Karen, he would be very rough. And I know that some parents just rough house with their kids, and this usually is totally normal, and it's all lighthearted, and in those cases, the kids are having fun, and they're usually laughing, and you know, play fighting back, but that is not how this was. There's actually a video of Philip playing with Karen when he's about two at most. And in the video, you can see Philip patting him really hard repeatedly on his chest, like really, really rough. Then Philip picked Karen up and hangs him upside down by his overalls. And he's just like swinging him back and forth and bobbing him up and down kind of violently. And Kieran is not laughing. In fact, he starts crying. But even though Kieran is very obviously not comfortable with what's happening, Philip seems totally unfazed and he just continues to hang him upside down and Kieran just continues to cry. It's just very odd and unsettling behavior, especially when you hear what else he goes on to do. Carol and Harry hated this. They thought Philip was way too rough with Kieran. But as far as I could tell, they just kind of stayed out of it in the beginning at least. Now, as time went on, Philip and Claire started to have some marital issues. First of all, Philip would call Claire fat and make fun of her size all the time. So that's enough right there to make me hate the guy. He also started spending money very frivolously. Claire had always been a saver and she would try as hard as she could to save as much as she could so the family could afford nice things and maybe take a trip here or there. But over time, Philip started buying like random things that didn't make any sense. Like he bought a set of golf clubs, which can be very pricey and he didn't play golf. He never even used the clubs. He went out and bought expensive weights for weightlifting. But again, he did not lift weights and he never touched those weights. He bought expensive shoes, just spending unnecessarily when the family really didn't have that kind of money to spend. And Philip would hide these purchases from Claire, but eventually Claire would find out about it and there would be an argument. And then Philip would pack up a bag and he would leave and he would be gone for days. Claire started referring to Philip as Gulliver because he would always be off on his travels. She would call up her mother and she would say, well, Gulliver has gone on his travels again and Carol would know exactly what that meant. On a few occasions, Philip was gone for so long that Claire ended up calling the police to report him missing. It's it's not fully known what he would do during these disappearances, but Claire knew that he would usually binge drink. Carol tried to talk to her daughter and get her to divorce Philip, but she just couldn't go through with it in the end. However, she did take the kids, at least on one occasion, and move in with Carol and Harry, but this only lasted for a few days and then she ended up going back to Philip. And despite any promises that Philip may have made to Claire to be better, their relationship was in a very rough spot. Philip was emotionally distant, he didn't express his feelings well at all and he just seemed sort of detached from his surroundings. And like I mentioned earlier, he didn't really have anyone besides Claire and the kids. His family was completely cut off and he didn't seem to have any friends, so his entire life revolved around his family. According to some people who were close to Claire and Philip, Philip wanted control over Claire and the kids and he wanted to be seen as the alpha male. He liked the fact that he was the sole breadwinner for his family, not for any noble reason. It was just another form of control. It was his way of showing them that without me, you would never make it. He loved the fact that Claire couldn't drive, so she even depended on him for rides everywhere she went. He just really liked the fact that Claire was so dependent on him. But all of that changed when both of the children started school and Claire now had the time to pursue a career of her own. And she found work as a nurse and she really enjoyed this job. She mostly enjoyed the freedom 
freedom that it gave her. She was now able to afford her own way without Philip's help. She even got her driver's license and she bought herself a car. So she no longer was depending on Philip for everything. And Philip did not like this. Claire was starting to step out on her own and he could feel the rain slipping. Not only that, but Claire had also joined a Weight Watchers program and she was doing really well. She had even won Slimmer of the Month because she had managed to drop so much weight and she was feeling really good about herself. And Philip did not like this either, especially because he was gaining a lot of weight around this time. Now, as Kieran and Jade grew up, they became very close. Kieran was said to be very inquisitive and talkative and a super affectionate kid who absolutely adored his sister. And Jade was said to be more quiet, a little more shy, and she was just sweet and she had a beautiful smile. And when you see photos of Kieran and Jade together, Kieran usually has his arms around his sister. And not only were the children close with each other, but they were also very close to their grandparents. They would go to their grandparents' house to spend time with them a lot. And it was during one of these visits that Carol and Harry learned of something very disturbing that was going on in the Austin home. Kieran had been sitting at the bar at Carol and Harry's house and he was swinging his legs. And every time he would swing his legs, he would kick the brick of the bar. And so Carol kind of turns around and, you know, tells him to stop because she's worried that he's going to damage the brick. When she says that, Jade says, yeah, stop it, Kieran, or else you're going to get a good hiding. A good hiding is a term used for like a beating. And Carol's like, no, we don't give hidings in this house. And then Jade says, well, we do at home. Sometimes daddy gives us a good hiding. And then she said, but the worst part is when daddy does this, right, Karen? And she wrapped her hands around her neck like this. And Karen just says, yes, you know, it's horrible when daddy does that. And Carol is absolutely horrified when she hears this. The kids have just told her that not only does their father hit them, but he's also choking them. And this time Carol and Harry do not keep quiet and they go straight to Claire and tell her what they've heard. And when Claire found out about this, she is extremely upset. And she herself had already started to see some concerning things. Not long before she found out about Philip choking the children, she had witnessed him hit Kieran so hard that he had fallen to the ground. Claire completely lost it. And she told Philip that if he ever lay a hand on Karen like that again, that she would leave him. So now after hearing this new information, Claire goes straight to Philip and confronts him. And in the end, he agreed to attend counseling and enroll in anger management courses. And even though Philip did not complete the courses, he did feel like he had made a lot of really good progress and Claire thought things were much better. Philip started spending more one-on-one -on -one time with Karen, who seemed to be the target most of the time. They started going for walks together. They started playing games and cooking together. And Claire thought that things were really starting to look up. She even told her mother that the family had never been happier. And not only was Philip getting along with the children better, but now that Claire was working, the family was now making more money than they had ever made before. And they were able to save a lot more each month. And by the summer of 2000, the family had saved up so much they were able to afford a trip to the Canary Islands with Claire's cousin and her husband. The family seemed to have had a really good time and by the time the trip was over, Claire was ready to book another one. But according to Claire's cousin's husband, the one that was also on the trip, things were not all great. He said that one morning he was cooking breakfast and Philip came over to his hotel room and he just started yelling at him about the trip, saying that the trip was pointless and he didn't know why they'd even taken this trip in the first place, just really random and aggressive. And he didn't know what the hell was going on. Eventually Philip left his hotel room, but it was just this really bizarre incident that happened out of nowhere, totally unprovoked. And it's unclear if Claire was ever told about this incident. When the vacation was over, Carol and Harry went to the airport to pick the family up. The kids were telling their grandparents all about the fun they'd had. And Claire was talking about booking another trip soon. And it really seemed like this vacation had done the family a lot of good and they were maybe going to be okay. But just one month after that vacation, tragedy struck the Austin family. On Sunday, July 9th, 2000, the Austin family had made plans to go see a movie in the theaters later that day. But in the meantime, Philip was helping Karen with some schoolwork and he was just having a really hard time with it. Philip was getting more and more frustrated with Kieran over the homework as time went on. And eventually he just blew up on him. And I don't know if it got physical. It sounds like Philip started yelling and berating Kieran and Claire heard it and got really upset. We don't know all of the specifics about the situation, but we do know that Philip ended up locking himself in the bathroom for the rest of the day. And the family did not make the movie that they had planned to see. On Sunday night, Carol called the Austin home 
to ask if they had enjoyed the movie because at this point she didn't know that they had missed it. But when she called, Philip answered, which was really odd because he never answered the phone. And when he answered, he just told Carol that Claire was upstairs and he was speaking really quietly. So Carol asked Philip if they had enjoyed the movie and he just says, we didn't go. And again, he's just being really quiet. So Carol just figured that maybe Claire and Philip had had an argument or something and she didn't want to pry. So she just says, okay, well, tell Claire that I'll call her back tomorrow. And they hung up. Now, since Philip has yet to give us an honest account of what happened next, the series of events that I'm about to go over with you is a combination of things that Philip has confessed to and can be backed up and what police think happened based on the evidence from the crime scene. So on the morning of Monday, July 10th, 2000, Claire got the kids up and dressed and then Philip dropped them off at school just like he did most mornings. But instead of going straight home after this to go back to sleep to prepare for his night shift, which is what he normally did, Philip stopped off at a massage parlor and he paid for sex with one of the workers there. This is something that seemed to be out of the norm for Philip. As far as police can tell, this was not something that he had ever done before. Philip then leaves the massage parlor and heads over to a local hardware store where he buys a rubber mallet. Then he drives home and heads straight upstairs to the bedroom where Claire is and a fight breaks out. We don't know the details of this fight, but we do know that a struggle started in that bedroom upstairs and it continued down the staircase. Claire managed to open up the front door, but Philip was right behind her and he just slammed the door before she could escape. Philip then attempts to strangle Claire, but Claire was not going down easy and she had been trained in self-defense. So she was fighting with everything she had. She managed to shake him off and break free and she ran towards the kitchen. It's thought that Claire either slipped and fell while she was running into the kitchen or maybe Philip knocked her down, but somehow she ended up on the kitchen floor. And that's when Philip began to beat her with the mallet. And this was a long sustained beating. Still not satisfied that he'd done enough damage, Philip then grabbed a kitchen knife and stabbed Claire so aggressively that the knife broke. So then he grabbed another knife and began repeatedly stabbing her with that one as well. And he's still not done. He then gets up and goes into the laundry room and grabs one of Claire's bras and then strangles her with that. It was later said that any one of those methods of murder would have been enough to kill Claire. This was such an extreme case of overkill. At some point using that same mallet, Philip also killed both of the family dogs, Dandy and Sooty. And after Philip is finally satisfied, his main goal is now to buy himself as much time as possible before the body is discovered. Philip knew that Claire had a shift scheduled to work that day. And he also knew that her coworkers would be calling to check on her if she just didn't show up. So he goes upstairs and he changes his clothes and he heads over to Claire's place of employment. And he tells them that she's not going to be in for a while because she hurt her back. The whole time he's there, he's very calm. He's very well-spoken. He doesn't seem to be in any distress whatsoever. And so no one questioned anything. Philip then abandoned his car on a random street and then he went and purchased one from a dealership. Again, this was done very calmly and raised no eyebrows at this point. And then instead of just taking off and going into hiding right then, he made the decision to drive over to his kid's school and pick them up. He loaded them up in the car and then proceeded to drive them around for seven hours, stopping once to pick them up some fish and chips for dinner. At some point during the drive, Philip laced the kids food or drink with a sleeping aid called Nitol. And once he felt like the kids were drowsy enough for it to be safe to go back to the house where Claire's body was still lying on the kitchen floor, he made his way home. Philip claimed that after he drove the kids around for a while, he actually contemplated just dropping them off at Carol and Harry's house but in the end, he decided against it. It's thought that Philip made sure that the kids were very sleepy or even totally asleep, and then he moved them from the car upstairs to their bedrooms. And at some point in the night, Philip made the absolutely horrible decision to kill both of his children. And he started with Jade. Using a tie from something like a bathrobe, he strangled his seven-year-old daughter to death and left her body lying there on the floor of her room. Next, he went into Karen's room and did the same thing to him. And he just left Karen's body lying there in his room as well. And then Philip hopped inside of his new car and he took off into hiding. And it wasn't until a week later that the school called Carol and Harry to ask about the kids. And of course, that's when they went over and discovered the bodies. Now, when the police first arrived, they are suspicious that Philip could be their killer, but they can't be sure. He could be a victim himself. He could have been kidnapped or maybe he was killed and then moved somewhere else. They needed to look deeper into things. 
During the search of the house, they found a stack of clothing with a pair of cargo pants that had blood on them. They had been folded up neatly and placed in a stack. And eventually the body of the other family dog, Sooty, was discovered in the search as well. Philip's car was also found pretty early on in the investigation. And inside the car, they found that rubber mallet and it was all bent up. The head of the mallet had blood on it. And they thought that this was likely one of the murder weapons. They also found a car magazine with several cars circled. And it definitely looked like maybe Philip had been shopping for a car. After finding all of the evidence, the police fully believe that Philip is the one who's killed his family. So they start really ramping up their efforts to track him down. They start looking into bank records and they can see that someone has been using Philip's debit card all across the seaside area of Northern England. Whoever it is, is staying at B&Bs all along the way. They can see this trail throughout these areas and they look into every lead, but they still haven't found Philip at this point. But then on July 20th, a person was just walking walking around the Lake District and they notice a car and there's a person inside who they think is acting suspiciously. So they call the police. When the police arrive, they found the man still sitting in the car. He appears to have attempted to harm himself. So the officer starts trying to help him and he asks this man for his name and he says, quote, I'm the man who's killed his wife and family. And of course, this man was Philip. Once the news had broke that the bodies had been discovered, Philip knew that the police were gonna be looking for him and he seemingly attempted to take his own life. Philip was taken to the hospital, but his wounds were very minor. So he was then arrested and sent back to Northampton to face murder charges. He eventually decided to confess to all of the murders, including the murders of the dogs, but most of his confession is absolute nonsense and doesn't even fit with the evidence that police already had. He claimed that he didn't plan to kill anyone that day. He said that the mallet had just been purchased for some work that he needed to do in the garden. And he just happened to be holding it when he and Claire started arguing that morning. He forgot that it was in his hand and he had a red mist moment. He swung his hand and that's when the mallet hit Claire. Now I had never heard of a red mist moment, but essentially it refers to extreme rage and anger like so intense that your judgment is clouded. Philip says that this red mist came down during their argument and then it just escalated from there and he ended up killing Claire. He just continues to push the idea that he forgot that he had killed Claire. He says that he drove to go pick up his children just because that's what he normally would do. He just kind of drove them around for a while, bought them fish and chips for dinner. He does admit that he put nitol into their drinks and that once they were asleep, he drove them home and put them in their beds. And then he says at some point, in the night, Jade woke up and asked for a glass of water. And so Philip said that he went downstairs to get her a glass of water. And that's when he saw Claire's body on the kitchen floor. And then suddenly he remembered what he had done. And he says that this is when he made that horrible decision to kill his children. But this is a load of absolute shit. If he really did not remember that he had killed Claire, then why was he working incredibly hard to cover his tracks and keep the kids away? Why did he go to Claire's work to let them know that she wouldn't be there? Why did he drive his kids around for hours and then drug them so that they were too drowsy to notice that their mother was lying dead on the kitchen floor. Philip never offered an honest explanation about why he did this, but it's very likely that he and Claire argued after he blew up at Kieran over the homework. Claire likely threatened to leave him and he just couldn't let that happen. He needed to maintain control. Once Philip was done giving this confession, he was asked by interviewers how he felt about what he had done. And his response was, well, I'm not proud. That was it. He did not show any remorse or any emotion really throughout the entire interview either. In fact, one of Philip's uncles ended up going to visit him at the prison. While he was there, all Philip did was ask about his stuff that was still in the house. And I think this all proves how much of a monster he really is. Philip was given three life sentences, but they were to be served concurrently, meaning that they were to be served at the same time, not one after another. And he would also be eligible for parole after 20 years, which is not even close to enough time for the horrible crimes that he committed. Philip actually came up for release at the beginning of 2021, but he was denied. However, it was recommended that he be transferred to an open prison and this would give him more freedom. He'd be able to go out into the public and look for work. But thankfully this recommendation was rejected in the end and Philip remained exactly where he had been. However, another parole hearing 
will take place this year in 2023. It was actually supposed to take place back in February of this year. The Quins sent their son to the hearing to read out their plea to keep Philip in prison. Carol and Harry couldn't make it themselves because Harry is in poor health at the moment. But after Claire's brother read the family statements, they were told that the rest of the hearing would have to be postponed until May of 2023 because they didn't have all the necessary information regarding Philip's behavior during his time in prison. So the hearing was adjourned until May 16th and the decision won't be made until two weeks after that, which will put the decision date on May 30th, which is Claire's birthday. And I cannot even begin to imagine what the Quins are going through. It's been a really tough healing process for the Quins and to have to deal with these hearings has to take such a toll on them. To know that there's potential that every time one of these hearings happens that Philip could be released into the public and he could potentially kill again. And just knowing that the monster who took their daughter and their grandchildren would be out free just living his life. And Philip is in his early 50s. Like he still has time to meet someone else and to repeat this exact same thing. The Quinn started a petition back in 2021 that I will link in the description. The petition is calling for life sentences to actually mean life for people who commit murder. I will also be looking for updates on the upcoming parole hearing and I will post in my community and maybe even pin a comment in this video when I find out the outcome of that. And that's all I have for you guys today. Let me know what you think about this case. And as always, I appreciate each and every one of you for watching and I'll see you next time.